Hello, welcome to English for Everyone, where we practice real life American English. Today we're going to learn to avoid some important mistakes, so let's get started. First, this is not correct. Also, this is fresh garlic. This is different to the garlic in a glass container, like this one right here. I cannot say this is different to the garlic in a glass container. I cannot use the preposition to in a sentence. I have to use from or than. It's correct to say this is different from the garlic in a glass container. I cannot say to. You can also use than. This is different than the garlic in a glass container. So example, this is fresh garlic. Is this different from the garlic in a glass container? That's right. This is different from the garlic in a glass container. This is also not correct. Now I'm in the wine section. Now if you think there's only one type of wine, there aren't. I cannot say if you think there's only one kind of wine, there aren't. Because the first statement is singular, if you think there's only one type of wine, I have to use singular for the negative part. There isn't. So it's correct to say if you think there's only one type of wine, there isn't. I cannot use there aren't in this sentence. So what do you think? Do you think there's only one type of wine? That's right, there isn't. I cannot say there aren't. This is also not correct. And before I leave, I need to pay for my food. And to pay for my food, I am going to check out the food at the checkout counter. I cannot say I'm going to check out the food at the checkout counter. When I use the phrasal verb check out, in this case, there's no object. I cannot say I'm going to check out the food. You just say I'm going to check out. I'm going to check out at the checkout counter. We cannot include the food. We cannot include an object. If you include an object, then it sounds like something different. You can say, I'm going to check out the car. It means I'm going to look at the car. Would you like to come and check out my new car? When you use an object, it has a different meaning. It means to look at something. So when you're at the checkout counter, don't use an object. I'm going to check out at the checkout counter. Example, she's going to check out at the checkout counter. Let's practice. What is she going to do? Is she going to check out at the checkout counter? That's right, she's going to check out at the checkout counter. I cannot say she's going to check out the food or her food. No object here. This is also not correct. And as you can see from this car behind me, it has a zebra print to it. I cannot say it has a zebra print to it. Here we have to use a different preposition. We use the preposition on. It has a zebra print on it. We cannot say to it. We have to use the preposition on. So it has a zebra print on it. Let's practice. Does it have a zebra print on it? That's right, it has a zebra print on it. This is also not correct. I wanted to ask you guys, where is the first section or department you guys go to when you enter the grocery store? I cannot say where is the first section you go to when you go to a grocery store. I cannot use where. If I say where is the first section you go to, you would give me a place in the front, in the back. But that's not the question. It's about the section. So we use a different question word. We say what. What is the first section you go to when you go to the grocery store? And the answer, I go to the meat department or I go to the produce department. Let's practice. What is the first section you go to when you go to the grocery store? Very good. This is also not correct. What is this called? This is where you will put sheets of paper inside and it will cut the bits of paper into small pieces. I cannot say it will cut the bits of paper into small pieces because bits of paper are small pieces. It doesn't make sense. You can say it will cut sheets of paper or pieces of paper into bits of paper or it will cut sheets of paper into smaller pieces. But you cannot say it will cut bits of paper into smaller pieces. It's a shredder. It doesn't cut bits of paper. It cuts larger pieces of paper into smaller pieces of paper. Let's practice. What does a shredder do? Does it shred larger pieces of paper into bits of paper? That's right. It shreds larger pieces of paper into bits of paper. This is also not correct. 
In today's video, we are going to learn about makeup vocabulary. But if you're a man, you can still learn a lot of English vocab, especially if you have a wife, a girlfriend, or a daughter, because women love makeup. I cannot say woman love makeup. Woman? That's one. That's singular. I'm speaking in general, so I use the plural version, women. Pronunciation, use the short I sound like this is for both syllables. Women. Women. Women love makeup is correct. I cannot say woman love makeup. I have to use the plural form women. Let's practice. What do you think? Do women love makeup? Very good. This is also not correct. I always clean my face and I never go to sleep with makeup. I cannot say I never go to sleep with makeup. Why not? We need a preposition. We need the preposition on. I never go to sleep with makeup on. Other examples. I never go to sleep with my socks on. Or I never go to sleep with my sweater on. I never go to sleep with my jeans on. We need the preposition here. Let's practice. Do you ever go to sleep with makeup on? Very good. Do you ever go to sleep with your sweater on? Very good. Do you ever go to sleep with your socks on? Very good. This is also not correct. There you go. Thank you. Next, I'm going through the security. We don't say go through the security. We don't use the article the. We just say go through security. Other examples, in the airport, you go through customs. In the airport, you go through security. We don't use the article the. We don't say we go through the customs or we go through the security. No article. Let's practice. When you go to the airport, do you have to go through security? That's right. You have to go through security. And when you fly international, do you have to go through customs? That's right. You have to go through customs. This is also not correct. And having deals with food and drinks makes people want to come to the game. We cannot say having deals with food and drinks. We say having deals on food or drinks. When you have a deal, you have a good deal, we use the preposition on. You have a good deal on something. They have good deals on food and drinks, not with. When do we use with? You say with when you talk about people. You have a good deal with somebody or you have a deal with somebody. But when we talk about things that you buy, use on. Example, they have good deals on food and drinks. They have good prices. That's the idea. Let's practice. Do they have good deals on food and drinks? That's right. They have good deals on food and drinks. This is also not correct. Now I'm in the cafeteria section to get some food. First, we don't usually say cafeteria section. In a stadium, they call it a concession stand or concession stands. In the mall, it's called a food court. But we don't call it a cafeteria section. And pronunciation. Now I'm in the cafeteria section. Cafeteria or cafeteria? We use the second one. Ear, ear. Like beer and hear and near. Cafeteer. Cafeteria. It's a stress syllable. Cafeteria not cafeteria. So when you go to the stadium, you get food and drinks at the concession stands, not the cafeteria section. Let's practice. When you go to a stadium, where do you get your food and drinks? That's right. You get your food and drinks at the concession stands. This is also not correct. And my dog, Ozuna, is a multi-poo, so he's not going to be pretty big, so a medium might be a little bit too big for him. I cannot say he's not going to be pretty big. Why not? Well, we use pretty for positive statements. We don't use pretty for negative statements. I can say he's going to be pretty big, but I cannot say he's not going to be pretty big. So how do we say it? We use that. In a negative statement, we use that. He's not going to be that big. We cannot use pretty in a negative statement. I cannot say it's not pretty hot or it's not pretty cold. Use that. It's not that hot. It's not that cold. 
and he's not going to be that big. Example, it's a small dog, and it will always be a small dog, because it's not going to get that big. Let's practice. Is the dog going to get really big? That's right. The dog is not going to get that big. This is also not correct. And this right here, filet mignon, is one of the most expensive cuts of meat. I cannot pronounce it filet mignon. It's not filet mignon, it's filet mignon. We use the ah sound, the open ah. Ah, like hot and stop. Filet mignon. Filet mignon. It's a French word, but we pronounce it like this in American English. Filet mignon. It's an expensive steak. I've never had filet mignon. It's too expensive for me. What about you? Have you ever had filet mignon? Write it in the comments. Tell me about it. Is it good? I have no idea. This is also not correct. Like Sprite, Fanta, they have more beverages. Like Fanta, look at how many flavors they have. They have orange Fanta, pineapple, strawberry. I didn't know they had so many Fanta flavors. I gotta try those in a little bit. We don't call this soda Fanta. Not in America. No American would ever say Fanta. It's pronounced Fanta. Fanta or Fanta. Sometimes you don't hear the T because you have NT between vowels. So you'll hear Fanta or Fanta, but never Fanta. Not in America. A lot of people like Fanta soda, but I don't. I think it has too much sugar. What do you think? Do you like Fanta soda? And if you like Fanta soda, what's your favorite flavor? They have orange, strawberry, grape. Write it in the comments. Tell me what your favorite flavor of Fanta soda is. And remember, don't say Fanta. This is also not correct. Here they have Pinot Noir. We don't pronounce this wine Pinot Noir. It's not Pinot Noir. It's pronounced Pinot Noir. Use the R sound like car and far. Noir. Pinot Noir. I know it's a French word, but in America we pronounce it like this. Pinot Noir. I don't drink wine, so I've never tried Pinot Noir. What about you? Have you ever tried Pinot Noir? Very good. This is also not correct. Pinot Grigio. The wine is not pronounced Pinot Grigio. It's pronounced Pinot Grigio. We use the sound zh like in measure and pleasure. Zh, zh, like division and usual. Zh, zh. Grigio. Pinot Grigio. I know it's a French word, but in America we pronounce it like this. We don't say Pinot Grigio, we say Pinot Grigio. And again, I don't drink wine, so I've never tried Pinot Grigio. What about you? Have you ever tried Pinot Grigio? Very good. Thank you for watching. And if you like this video, subscribe to our channel. And if you want to become a member, click the join button. And we'll see you next time.